In this question, they're asking us to calculate the indefinite integral of 16x minus 8 to the power of 5. There's actually two different ways that we could possibly try and do this question. The first way would be to actually multiply 16x minus 8 uh, times itself, 5 times, and then expand that all out and then calculate each of the independent integrals um, kind of one at a time. Uh, that actually is a lot of work, so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use u substitution to make our life easier. So the first question when doing a substitution is to figure out what we should substitute in for. Um, typically, uh, as in this question, we would like to substitute in for something that will make our uh, integral easier. Um, and so for me, I'm going to choose in this question that uh, I'm going to let u equal to 16x minus 8. So in that case, uh, if I let u equal 16x minus 8, our integral 16x minus 8 to the power of... 5 dx uh, simplifies to just be uh, the indefinite integral of u to the power of 5 dx. Uh, all I did here, I didn't do any calculus, all I did was replace the 16x minus 8 uh, by its nickname, which I said was u. So uh, I've done nothing but uh, swap in u wherever I saw 16x minus 8. Now, unfortunately, uh, you can never do an integration uh, when you have uh, two uh, different variables. Here we're asked at being asked to integrate with respect to x and our function is a function of u. Uh, so what we would like to do is turn uh, this whole uh, integration into an integration with respect to u. Of course we could turn it into integration with, uh, with respect to x but that's what we had originally and that was too complicated. So what we want to do is we want to get all the variables the same so we want to turn this into uh, an integration with respect to u. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to in some sense, uh, figure out a way to get rid of this dx, turn it into a du. So we can do that um, by um, a trick, by calculating the derivative of u with respect to x, which in this case, if you just take the derivative of u with respect to x, you get 16. And then, um, this is not quite mathematically sound, but it actually, for sophisticated reasons, it works out to, to be okay and, and give you the correct answer, is we're gonna pretend uh, that this uh, du by dx, this derivative, is actually a fraction. Of course it's not, um, but it just turns out um, that if you treat it as such when you're doing a substitution, uh, that things end up being okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this as a fraction and we're going to solve this equation uh, for dx. So uh, if we uh, go ahead and multiply both sides by dx, uh, we get du equals 16 dx, and then we can rearrange that to be dx equals 1 over 16 du. So what I'm going to do now is in my integration, wherever I see a dx, I'm going to replace it by 1 over 16 du. So this becomes uh, u to the power of 5. And then my dx, I now have a formula for, which becomes 1 over 16 du. Now I have a constant multiplying my function u here. Uh, so I can actually take the constant outside if I want. So that becomes 1 over 16, the integral of u with uh, the power of 5 du. Now I'm in a situation where I have an indefinite integral uh, of a function of u and I need to integrate with respect to u. So now I'm in a position where I can actually carry out this anti-differentiation and when I do that um, using my anti-derivative laws uh, what I end up with is 1 sixth u to the power of 6 uh, plus a constant. And then uh, if uh, because they gave us a the question in terms of x what I should do here is turn everything back into x uh, so get rid of all the u's. So to do that I look up and I see what was actually u standing in for? It was standing in for 16x minus 8. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in and wherever I see a u, I'm going to put it back in terms of x. So this is 1 sixth, 16x minus 8 to the power of 6 plus a constant. Make these square brackets. And now I can actually uh, simplify this a little bit. Um, what I can do is I can multiply uh, the 1, six, uh, 1 over 16 in into this, so what I end up with is 1 over 96, 16x minus 8 to the power of 6, and then I actually end up um, multiplying, oops, let's just try that again, 1 over 96, 16x minus 8 to the power of 6, and then I multiply this constant by 1 over 16, um, and if I'm just being really careful about this, I can write that as 1 over 16 times the constant. And then of course, uh, this is some arbitrary constant, doesn't really matter what this number is, it's just some real number multiplying some other real number, one over 16. So this is just ends up 
some other arbitrary real number. And so at the end of the day, I can call that any constant I want. So I'm just going to rename it D. Um, you could just leave it as C if you would like. Um, many textbooks do. But just for clarity, I'm just going to rename this constant as D. And so this is my final answer.